Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. Kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. book 
with an assertive nod. Rolo muttered under his breath. Vex slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. of Luca's mind. Question hung in the air. Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. Of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. He held perfectly still, tempering his breath and to listen closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Or maybe Gran knew everything. Lucas hungry like groaned, not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into Flipped the lid to read the label.
Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Luca groaned and tried to move. His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. Chapter 9 A Speech to End All Speeches Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. Ah. 
Gus cleared his swordly, loosened his tie. <laughs> Liam Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Uh -huh. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and him off the stage. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out of his vest. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. He wiped away a single tear. the podium to emphasize each word. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent in rapt attention. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. began to build to a crescendo. began to look around nervously. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. He raised his hands up to the heavens.
that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! No, I... I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. no choice but to refuse Iggy's request, hit his grip, and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time. But Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Hmm, I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. 
she'd already gotten him to reveal his... This was gonna be easy. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Beck quickly removed the ropes. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. Beck was on a roll playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. Luca and Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. Thank <laughs> you.
around nervously. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore. Holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Thank you. 
Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. Beck flung open the door and they all squeezed in. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine.
hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. He gestured toward the strange tubes. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. He shook his head wistfully. <laughs> Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. began to laugh.
color drained from Nuncrete's face. Nuncrete grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. struck Mr. Nuncrete. the suction to yank her into the dark.
dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee, 